QuickBooks Pro Plus Desktop 2022 OneNote Presentation Bank Reconciliation Month Number 1 Deposits. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Pro Plus Desktop 2022. If you have access to OneNote, would like to follow along, icon left hand side, topic introduction 9060, bank reconciliation, month number one deposit tab. Also, take a look at the immersive reader tool, topic introductions in the text area too. Same name, same number, but with transcripts. Transcripts that can be translated into multiple languages, either listened to or read in them. Same name and numbers, presentations as well. Topic introductions designed to give an introduction to the topic. Provide screenshots, links where applicable. Give accounting background to complement the presentations and can be used to follow along with them if you don't have access to the software at that time. Closing the icon on the left-hand side, we're looking at the bank reconciliation. We're at the home page and we're comparing the checking account, what is in the checking account in our books, to what is on the bank, what we're going to do is use the system in order to basically take the general ledger information from our our system and compare it to the bank statement. We did that last time looking at the banking information, which you can get to by going to the banking drop down bank reconciliation for the first month for that for us that's january 31st then we got the beginning balance which is not correct for us at this point in time because it's not tied out to the bank statement and that's going to cause us a problem a problem often seen when we're doing the first month bank reconciliation a problem which we will get to at the end of the process and see what happens so what i'm going to do is enter everything in and then at the end, we'll analyze what is happening with this beginning balance issue, what's commonly going to it's going to look like and then how we can fix it. We've got the ending balance at the 61,241,85. That matches what's on the bank statement. I'm not going to add any service charges or interest. I don't like using these things here because I would rather do that on my end and just enter it directly into the check register if they're going to be needed. So I will typically simply go forward. Now this is our bank statement which has the beginning balance plus the additions and the subtractions. We know that the beginning balance is off by that 5,000. We'll deal with that later. But now we're just going to tick and tie off everything that's in the detail, meaning the cleared balances then should tie out to the additions and the subtractions. We're going to start off just doing the deposits, noting that as you enter data from the system, we're going from the bank statement to our system. And that's the way you want to think about it, ticking and tying off from the bank statement over to our system, which I'll go, I'll scroll down here and do it this way, ticking off from the, from the bank statement down here to our system, which we've basically are going to tick off all of the deposit items the reason that we're going to do it that way is because remember if it's on the bank statement and not in our system then it's likely that we're going to have to add it to our system that might be something on the deposit side like interest that we got interest income from the bank that we didn't know about we're going to have to add it because the bank is typically going to be correct unless the bank made an error which is not typically the case and then if it's on our system but not in the bank we expect that to possibly happen, My, maybe not so much on the deposit side, but to some degree because we might have made a deposit on our side which hasn't cleared the bank yet, and therefore we will have an outstanding deposit that we're going to deal with. Also note that when you're grouping these together with the deposits, it should be easy if you did the accounting system correct, because if we enter the deposit first, it's going to be based on the date and the amount. Those are the two things that you have, you know, kind of like for sure, to be able to reconcile these items now if they're transfers you might also have like memo information which could tell you basically the customer but uh, you'll typically at least have the amount and the date now the date is should be pretty close if we entered the information first the date on our books will be before the date on the bank statement but it should be pretty easy or pretty fast for a bank to clear these days it should be at least within three days you would expect so that date field is much more relevant then it might be for an actual check that was written, which could take a long time for it to actually clear the bank. And then the amount should be something that we can rely on to tie out to. If the amounts are different, that's probably because we're not using our undeposited funds efficiently. And we got things like credit cards, for example, grouping things together, putting them in our system in a different grouping than they're appearing on the bank statement. That if that happens, you're going to have to talk to, you know, you're line things up with your credit card company and your bank and basically and then use your undeposited funds to come up with a system of data input 
so that they're going to be hitting your bank account in the same grouping as they're going to be hitting the bank statement. That also could happen if you're grouping together cash receipts and you're not using undeposited funds, then you, you might not have them grouped together. If you have everything grouped together, this should be a very easy process because the amounts should tie out and the dates should be very close and you can just tick and tie those out and then just tick and tie them out over here. Notice the total adds up for the deposits, 143,07085, uh, and that matches up to the deposits here. If the beginning balance was right, and we just ticked off the cleared deposits, and then we ticked off the cleared checks, the ending balance would have to be correct. Keep in your mind that this has to work. Notice that there's one deposit that didn't get checked off. That's because we're assuming it has not yet cleared. We could check if it has cleared because it will be like February at least when we're doing the bank reconciliation for January. So we could check the bank to see if it cleared. If it has, great, then it's not a problem. It's just an outstanding item. It will be a reconciling item when we actually generate the report. Remembering that this is not actually the report. If this comes, this gets reconciled, this is the process of reconciling the report will generate the reconciling items, which will be outstanding checks and deposits. The ones not checked will be the reconciling items that we're going we're gonna to need in our bank reconciliation report.